Victor regards to gather information and access the onions without arousing suspicion. That will be difficult. Let's see if this arouses suspicion. <laughs> Apparently not. It's helpless. With all the lashes this bastard is taking, he won't live to see another day. What's the matter? You were speaking of wages just now. I want in. We're wagering on how long that bastard locked down there is going to last. There's quite a number of us in, so we've gathered a tidy little sum so far. I see. If you want in, ask Captain Karen. He's by the dungeon entrance. I wagered eight coins that the louse in the dungeon buys it the day after tomorrow. Considering how the commander's treating him, there's no way you'll win. Captain Charon! What's the matter? You were speaking of wages just... We'll... I see. If you want in, I okay. wagered eight coins that yeah, the louse in the dungeon Yeah, uh, let's not try the other one. <laughs> we need to appear to not know what we're doing. Yeah, though is the way no shit. The corpse we're storing is wearing a tabard, but I can't figure out. Well, Let's go with the, the lower looking for the coat of arms in this damn book. Oh, there are so many of them. The low level guards first, I think. I've really had it with all this. If Harold wants to find out who this corpse was, why doesn't he look into it himself? Not so loud. If he hears us, we're headed straight for the hole, or worse. Excuse me. Yeah? Excuse me. I heard you talk about Sir Harold. Is he truly that bad? Let me guess. You're a new recruit, eh? So let me give you a good piece of advice. If there's one man you shouldn't irk, it's him. Yeah, Sir Harold is the worst. I remember one day, one of the guards joked about his height. Nothing harsh, just a little laugh, you know. Well, he found out about it. The poor sod's been on latrine scrubbing duty ever since that day. Keep away from him as much as you can. The corpse we're storing okay. is where it is. Hammard, but I can't do it. Come on, it's a bit of fun. The prisoner couldn't care less, you know. He's going to die anyway. We may as well try and make a bit of money from his death. What do you want? I heard there were wagers being taken on the prisoner. Yes, my friend here is taking part in a little game. He and his friends are wagering on the murderer locked up down there. All the others are dead. He's the only one left. We're not abusing him or anything. We're just wagering on when we think he'll die. It's no skin off his nose, as far as I can see. If you want to get a bet in, you'll have to ask Sir Karen. Oh, come off it. It's hardly the first time that we've done it. Okay. Not really surprising. They're taking bets on that subject. And Sir Harold has heard all about it, of course. Only you could fall asleep right next to a crime scene. Yeah, Sir Harold hasn't had me relieved for at least two days. But it could have been much worse. Hello there, friend. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Were you just talking about a murder? Oh, you mean you haven't heard about it? Now don't you worry about it. The commander's already found the killers, and they're getting familiar with the dungeons. He's not commander for nothing, eh? He's at a private meeting at Red Keep as we speak. He's a big man, our commander. 
So, Benfrey, I hear you got caught that sleeping on your watch yesterday. A little strange. Yeah, Not really. I dozed off again at we'll the find out which house he belonged sewers. to. Someone will <laughs> inform like, them, eh? and then we'll hear no more right of it. Next to where the murders took place. Yes, but the commander seemed pretty desperate for us to burn the dark-haired boy's body as quickly as we could. It's a bit fishy, if you ask me, and I have a feeling it has something to do with gold. Yes? Can we help you? Is that body down there one of the victims of the sewer murders? Yes. And since he's a nobleman, we're keeping him where it's cool while we wait to be told what to do with him. It shouldn't take long to find out who he was, as we already know the identity of the other victim. It's kind of strange, actually. The other one was just a peasant's son. A dark-haired boy known as Cedric. But no one knows anything about the nobleman. Why was he hiding in the sewers with the poor merchant boy anyway? Forget about it, Morton. At the end of the day, they're both dead. I see. Thank you. Okay, that hmm. pretty much. I need to know if it's my brother. I have to find a way to get down there. Don't you find the commander's attitude towards that? Yeah. That pretty much sums it up. This tier is for officers only. You've no right to be here. Hey, you. What are you doing here? I want to go up there and get a good view of the city. Maybe when you're an officer. But until then, dream on. Okay, let's see how we get past Charles. There are so many of them. Hey, you. Don't I know you? Maybe. My friends tell me I have a pretty common face. Yeah. Well, what do you want? I want to place a wager on this prisoner, too. That's great. The more, the merrier. I want to see what I'm putting my money on first, though. Go ahead. If he's dead, let me know immediately. <laughs> well, and you hope <laughs> find his body? Not very hopeful, is it? seen you before. What brings you around here? Did you come to see the prisoner? Yes, I want to see what state he's in before making a wager. You'll have to come back later then. I shut the door. With this much money at stake, I don't want anybody getting any ideas. I wagered that he would live three more days, and I don't want anyone killing him when I'm not looking. I see. of Sawick. All that effort. And for what? Garwin! No! I can't believe it! Perhaps it's someone else. A servant. Anybody. Wait. What's this? A letter. All right. Uh, my dear Garwin, you... You who said that the sun would slow when I wasn't by your side will find within this envelope a lock of my heart. Maybe it will ward off the bad luck. You'll come back to me soon now. And in the meantime, you will have something to remember me in those lonely nights. You fall now. Okay, let's see. To all servants of law in the Sankinam, Sir Moswell, 
Tomb Raider of the Night's Watch is officially relieved of his duties at our fortress. He's free to travel as he pleases within the boundaries of the realm. In order to find support and my will to join the Night's Watch. Sir Moore will abide by the laws and customs of any kingdom he crosses, provided that they do not contract his duties and notes to the Night Watch. Your Mormon, Commander. Okay, was for Lucas and my son, and there was went first to exalt the virtues of justice and loyalty. Uh, yeah. By the flame! And the girl's lock of hair is still attached to the letter. It really is him. Forgive me, little brother. I should have returned sooner. What on earth were you doing in that cellar, Garwin? Why did someone want you dead? His murderer. He's here somewhere. And he will give me answers. So, how's it going? Did you find out who it was? I'd rather get rid of the body before it starts to rot. Okay. This man, he belonged to House Sawi. By the father's beard. The others spent hours trying to figure it out. Tell the commander. He's going to be mighty pleased with you, my friend. Even his assassin didn't know who he was. He's locked up in here, isn't he? Yeah. In a cell close by. But I am in charge of the keys, and I open the doors for no one. I need to see him. No way. There's too much money at stake for me to let anyone see him. If you kill him, I'll lose all my money. And that would really get my knickers in a twist. I wonder how much money is it? He only cares about the money. I don't want to kill any more gold looks. Let's see if this works. How much money is at stake? About 125 stags, as far as I know. Why? Okay, let's give him the money. Listen, there's no telling if you're going to win this wager or not. However, I happen to have 125 stags in my purse. It's yours if you give me the keys. You give me that much for a bunch of keys? What do you want with this prisoner? None of your business. So do you want the money or not? Of course I do. Then take it. Leave the tower, go do your rounds, and take that friend of yours who's waiting next door. You haven't seen or heard anything. Is that clear? Very clear. Hand over the money, my friend. Holy shit! was a lot of money, but yeah, getting more gold the first time we got fucked. Try to record as much money as we can. Good eye for you, son of a whore. 
I ask the questions here. You're Oris, aren't you? Bugger off! Listen to me, fool. I'm not a gold cloak, but I can kill you right now if you so wish. On the other hand, should you answer my questions, I'll make it worth your while. You're not from the City Watch? If you're telling the truth, I have nothing to lose. Ask your questions. What are you doing here, murderer? How did they catch you? Nobody caught me, old man. I was set up. What do you mean? The man who was supposed to pay me. He locked me up down here. Who? Who hired you? That bastard, Janos Slint. It was the commander of the City Watch himself who told me to slit the throats of the two men hiding in that damn cellar. We'd known each other for some time. He came to me in the tavern I frequent. He said he had a job for me. Said it would pay 300 silver stags. Enough to feed us all for more than a year. I asked for part of the money up front, as I always do. He told me to meet him at his office, and everything went well. But when two of my men and I came to collect the other half of the money after I had completed the job, he had us thrown into this hole. He tricked me. No, uh, that sounds very much like the truth to me. How did you meet? Did you serve as a gold cloak? No, not at all. But I've done this kind of favor for the commander in the past. There'd never been any problem until now, so I didn't have any reason to doubt him. As I told you, I was in his office upstairs when he made his offer. He paid me the advance without any trouble. When he left to get the money, I took a quick look around his office. There was a letter. I can't read, but I recognize the seal I saw at the bottom of that letter. It was Velar's, the Queen's lapdog. Velar? Are you sure? I know what I'm talking about. He and his bloodseekers have been getting in our way since they came to King's Landing. We're needed less and less because of them. I realized too late that it was them I was working for. I should have turned down this offer. The bloodseekers. Those damned thugs. If Valar really is behind all this, that letter may just help me bring him down. I have to get into this office. Get me out of here. I told you everything you need to know. Your turn to help me. These scoundrels of the City Watch betrayed me. And now they're wagering on when I'm going to die. I'm the leader of the Reapers. If you save my life, you won't regret it. No. Go, go when he's dead. Uh, he's dancing in the light of Frenlar. This guy will help me. If you're telling the truth, and I find the letter you spoke of, then maybe I'll come back to free you. But if you're lying, by Relore it will cost you. Best if I stay here and wait. I don't have a chance on my own. Okay. Going to a fucking mess. I'm sure someone is going to interrogate me. But this would be the last mission for today. This tier is for officers only. You've no right to be here. Hey, you. What are you doing here? I've been ordered to collect some important documents for the small council of the Red Keep. Oh? Upon whose orders? Commander Janos Slint in person. The Commander? Why would he ask you to do that? I was traveling by his side to the Red Keep. Once there, he said he'd forgotten some documents and that I had to quickly return them to him or there'd be trouble. Yeah. When the Commander gives an order, you better do as he says. I'd rather not have any trouble. Go ahead. But move your ass! 
Sir, the new. Good chain, us is neat. The horizon. The interior. Wait, it's the personal seal of the City Watch commander. Better take it. I will probably need it to free Oris. Yeah. Yeah, if Balar has his socks, I need my own socks, I think. So that's the famous letter. Oris wasn't lying. I swore to help him if he was telling the truth. But am I really obliged to keep this promise? If things get out of hand, I risk my own skin. All that for the man who killed Garwin. Let's have a look. Okay, in response to Commander James Lind, Cedric Rivers must die. Without fail. I should not have to remind you what is at stake. She will not be satisfied until we've gotten rid of her last bastard. As I told you, already taking care of another prey holed up in the north. As for your difficulties, finding exactly where your target hides within the sewers of King's Landing, I care not. It's whatever means deem necessary to put an end to all this immediately. Whatever happens, remember that discretion in this matter is not it's of the utmost importance to a crown. As a consequence, you must leave no witnesses in your wake. The powers I made sure you were provided should contain enough dragons to grow the eventualities. Remember that she will not accept failure, Sir Valar Hill. Okay, let's go and free Mr. Orrin Hatch. Yeah, he's no friend of the Lord Seekers, then he's a friend of me. Did you find the letter? See, I wasn't lying. Yes, you were right. And I may need you and your men sometime soon, so I'll help you. But this won't be easy. There's no room for error. If we make even the slightest mistake, the whole city watch will come down on us. I don't have anything to lose anyway. Untie me. Thank you. What's your plan? We're going to pretend that you're under my guard by order of their commander. If we can fool the guards, we shouldn't have any trouble. I like the way you think. If we succeed, it will be a remarkable feat. And if we fail, it'll be a slow and painful death for the both of us. May the light show us the way. Okay, let's see how this works. It's not going to be easy. What's all this commotion? And what is this criminal doing here? He's supposed to be in the dungeons. I was ordered to escort this prisoner to the Red Keep. What? I'm the one in charge of these dungeons. If a transfer had been ordered, I'd know about it. Not this time. This transfer needs to be kept secret. Here's the commander's personal seal. He entrusted me with it for this mission, and I was told to show it to no one but you and the jailers of the Red Keep. But what about the wages? It was the commander who started it all. What shall we do with all the money? Not my problem. If I don't get this prisoner to the Red Keep quickly, you're going to have a lot more problems than a few missing groats. All right, take it easy. 
Go ahead. Damn, just when we'd finally gotten some entertainment. Okay. Let's just walk out there, I guess. <laughs> Some battles are won by swords and spears, others with quills and ravens. Taiwananista! You're free now. Rulor has guided us thus far. Your god had nothing to do with it, my friend. You just have a gift of convincing people. Whatever it may be, you owe me now. Yes, I give you my word. If you ever need me and my men, come to our den. Until then, old man. I must go and dress my wounds now. Go back to Lord Halrton and tell him what you have discovered. All oh, right, don't Lord so. Alistair, please, my lord. Okay. Let's talk to that guy as well. Let me check the gold cloak. How the fuck I have not learned that? Alright. Let's compare shit. I still think I have to wear those for RP reasons if no other one. Okay, let's skip the gold cloaks. Yeah, the Sarwick armor is better. So that one is better still. Let's go with the leather armor for the moment. So let's just start wearing light armor only. See how that works for me. Hub? Oh, I'm so glad they let you go, my lord. I was so afraid when I heard the gold cloaks had taken you away. A sorry business it was. Yes, Lambert was far less fortunate than me, I fear. Did they cause you any trouble? Me? No. Who could have anything against a poor bugger like me? Anyway, I've kept away from the house since then. But I have a favor to ask of you, my lord. If it's not too much trouble, of course. It depends on what it is. What is the matter with you? With me? Nothing. But I fear for Bethany, a friend of mine. She's a good girl. Only in a difficult situation. She needs a kind hand, you see. Slow down. What do you mean by a kind hand? Why come to see me? Well, it's that there's this lord who's treated her badly like. A bad man who got himself too interested in a beautiful girl, you see. I'm not sure I follow. Continue. <coughs> well, if I could, I would go and tell him some truths, and that would be that. But I am one of the common folk, my lord. And he's eyeball, that one. He'll never listen to the likes of me. Whereas you, all you need say is a few words to him. No more than that. It'd be such a kindness to Bethany. She'd explain it best. Better than me, I'm sure. Relor knows how to show love. I couldn't refuse to help a young woman in need. Tell me where she is, I will see what I can do. Oh, thank you, my lord. Thank you. I'll be off to tell her the good news. 
I can't tell you how happy she'll be. Okay. So, sir, did you find out what happened to your brother? Yes. Valar had him executed. Mark my words, I am going to find this murderer and cut him down where he stands. I'm afraid that's not possible, sir. He left during your investigation with at least a hundred men. Ice and death, this wretched dog knows no limits. He killed my brother, and now he's trying to undermine any hope I have of gaining the Queen's favor. I must speak with Lord Halton immediately. He awaits you at his residence. Try to decide quest. Holy shit. <laughs> Not really love check. I just put that number there as a placeholder. <laughs> no, in reality we're in part 30, I'd say. 30, yeah. Yeah, let's go and do a side quest because they apparently disappear. If you don't do them quickly enough. I don't know how many chapters this has, but we're in chapter 8. Let's hope this is not a trap. That guy seems very sleazy. This might very well be a trap. It certainly looks like it to me. These guys are very big fancy, Lobshack. <laughs> I made a huge mistake. I should have gone with a swordsman. I can't believe you asked me that. I think I've done more than enough already. Is that a jape? Do you think you're the only one who can do it? I can find grumpy cows like you in any gutter. Oh really? Do it yourself then. I'd like to see that. The others take me. Who is it? Him again? Mother have mercy, Gunter. You are terrible. Is it too much for you to remember your courtesies once in a while? Piss on courtesies. I like to know who you're bringing round before I offer them bread and water. I don't run a whorehouse. I have come because I was told a young lady needed my help. This is far from the welcome I was expecting. Calm yourselves, you two. I told you of him. He's my master, Sir Alistair Sarwick. I told you he'd help. You see, Brew? Now get out of my sight. I need to speak to this fine man, and I don't want you cursing behind my back. Aye. All right, then. Forgive me, my lord. I don't mean to be rude or nothing. I'm just doing what I can to be master of my own home, you see. I'll leave you alone. Okay. Please forgive Gunson, my lord. He's forgotten his courtesies. I'm Bethany. It's a pleasant surprise to see someone as fine as you come down here. I speak highly of your kindness, but I didn't think to see you. There is little harm in coming to hear your story, young lady. Tell me, how can I help you? I need you to take a message to Sir Giles of House Langwood. I... Mother of Mercy, this is so embarrassing. I am with his child, but he doesn't even know. He hasn't come to see me for weeks. I've already made several attempts to send word to him, all in vain, I fear. House Langwood has a high opinion of itself, you know. They don't approve of a common girl like me appearing at their gates. They sent me away. Have you considered the possibility that Sir Giles has no intention of seeing you again? It would not be the first time that a knight abandons one of his conquests the very next day. No, it can't be. It's not like that. He... Sir Giles was so sweet and came here so often. He loves me. I'm sure of it. Help me, my lord, I beg of you. If you've ever known what it is to love, don't let my child be born without a father. 
A punch dagger or a saber? You could wear sabers. A punch dagger? I don't think so. And you know why swords are so mainstream? Because they work! And a fucking crossbow does not. <laughs> I'm sure you won't object if I ask you some questions. Anything you want, my lord, if it will help. Tell me more about your valiant knight. What do you really know of him? Of his life, you mean? Very little. He's the last born son of House Langwood. A humble but old family. He lives in a manse here in King's Landing. But I know what matters. He may seem cocksure and heartless, but inside... He's very sensitive. He wants to be sure of doing the right thing, but he relies too much on the counsel of others to tell him right from wrong. And he loves me, even if he dares not admit it. After all, growing fond of a girl in my condition would disgrace him. His friends never cease telling him this. It seems you have complete confidence in Sir Giles. Why do you think he has abandoned you like this? Because of his family, of course. They've never looked kindly on our coupling. Just think, a peasant girl, they must have put pressure on him, or schemed to keep him away from me. Giles did tell me of some matters to attend to, a journey he had to make. But he ought to have come back by now. Help me, I beg of you. Not knowing what has happened is turning me mad. Who is the lout who was scolding you just now? What is his part in all this? You mean my cousin, Gunser? He might seem rough, but he's not a bad man. He agreed to take me in until the matter is solved, which means a lot to me. That's why I put up with his black humor. Please ignore him. He's not worth the trouble. Has he taken you in? Where do you normally live? At my aunt's, as it were. A shrew who thinks she's a lady. She's not one to have her belief soiled. She didn't look kindly on Sir Giles' visits and never let me forget it. When he stopped coming and it came out that I was with child, we quarreled. She said some things that I can't forgive. She went and forced me out of her home. I paid a visit to the Langwoods, but I was turned away without the chance to see Sir Giles. I had nowhere to go. Gunser finally agreed to let me in. He didn't have to, for I know it's a burden on him. The sooner I see Sir Giles, the better for everyone. Okay, let's see what the knight has to say. I will try and help you. I will go and find him, and we'll see how he looks on your situation. Thank you. Oh, thank you, my lord. Hand him this letter. It will bring him here. Don't get your hopes up, young lady. I said I would speak to him, not that I will make him change his mind. In the end, it is his decision. I just need to see him and speak to him. Everything will turn out right after that. Tell him I'm waiting here. I'm sure he will come. I hope so for your sake, Bethany. Yeah, he will come. He always does. Run first in Giles and explain the predicament. The whole problem with this the man, he came too much to see this girl. Now she has a child. Another bastard! This fucking world is full of bastards. Cannot turn a corner without finding three of them looking you in the eye. Well, I'm getting close to my quest, main quest. And I'm doing this because I want to level up. It's incredible how difficult it is to level up with this guy. Good day to you. Is this the manse of the family Langwood? Uh, yes. Who's asking? I am Sir Alistair of House Sarwick. I need to speak with Sir Giles. Is he in? Yes. Uh, Sir Giles? Yes, he's here. Do you want me to go find him? What do you think? Well, uh, yes. Forgive me, my lord. I am on my way. He's not the right, this one. Well, where is he? Ah, Sir Alistair. I don't believe I've had the pleasure, even of knowing you by name. Please tell me, what brings you to my door? I have come on behalf of a young lady known to you. Bethany entrusted me with a message for you. Beth? God be good. 
Thank you for informing me, Half Pint. I will take care of it from here. Now go stare at something in the kitchens. In the kitchens? Yes, sir. <laughs> Half brain should be his name. Are you afraid of what might be hurt, Sir Giles? You could say that. I'm to be married soon, you see. I doubt that the name of Beth would go down too well if spoken too loud. It's a sorry business. I liked the girl, truly I did. I had some of my best times with her. Unfortunately, the family of my betrothed might be rather sensitive about the matter. I'm sure you understand. Yes, completely. What? Oh, what did she want? She asked me to give you this, and to tell you that she hopes to see you. She is expecting your child, Sir Giles. She needs you. My what? A bastard? With Beth? Gods, that is, uh, unexpected. Why did this have to happen now? <laughs> I mean, I've had my fair share of scandal, but this... What am I to do? Do you think this will put my marriage at risk? I've done nothing wrong, have I? A man is entitled to have a good time when he's young, isn't he? The flame burns bright and clear in you. That is not something to be ashamed of. Do not trouble yourself with what your new family will think. Your brides, brothers and father all did the same in their day. If you fear the bastard's presence will trouble your betrothed, find him another home. But you cannot leave Bethany in this wretched state in which you put her. Yes. I do owe her that. I will not abandon her, don't worry. But it's strange. I would have thought her establishment would take care of her with this sort of business. After all, it must happen quite often, does it not? Her establishment? What do you mean? The brother is some sort of joke. Beth is a whore. Shataya's most beautiful girl. I was her best client, at least before I uh, uh, became betrothed. I'm sure you that is not how she described things to me. Maybe she was ashamed. Or perhaps she thought that you would turn her away if she told you. In truth, I thought all I needed to do was stop going there, and each would then carry on with their own lives. I would never have imagined she would leave the brothel for me. That changes everything, doesn't it? Not really. Just still impregnated there. Why, why, what, why not? Let's go and ask her. She lied to my face about her position, and she would not have done so without good reason. It would be ill-advised to do anything until we are certain of her intentions. Shatire is a friend of mine. If Bethany was one of her girls, she might be able to tell me more about her. I defer to your judgment, my lord. Given my situation here, I would prefer not to return to the establishment myself. I shall wait for you here. That might be wise. Okay, has Chatai. <laughs> this is turning to a little goose chase, isn't it? Love it. Love it. But do you know he lives a block away from the fucking horse? <laughs> it would be easy to sneak here. But she didn't seem to be a high priced uh, lady companion. She seemed like the ones you find in the gutters. Sir Alistair. It's a pleasure to see you again so soon. I hope that you will stay with us a bit longer this time. It would be a great pleasure, dear lady. But again, I have only come to satisfy my curiosity. I would like you to tell me about Bethany. Beth? That girl was a bad seed. She's no longer here, Alistair. What has become of her since she left is of no concern to this house. This is the first time you speak so bitterly of one of your girls, my dear lady. What did she do to so displease you? There are rules in our house, for our visitors as well as our girls. Beth paid them no heed. She was ambitious, arrogant, dishonest. She enjoyed deceiving her lovers. 
letting them get behind in the payments. She'd say it was to entice them to come and see her more often. I thought perhaps she skimmed some of the money, but I'll never know. I told her to put an end to her scheming, and she left. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if this place is full of STDs, Lobshack. They, they tend to the lords and ladies of the realm. So, it wouldn't look good if you were to have sex with one of these ladies and pass started to pour out of her lady parts. Yeah, not good at all. Is it possible that she ran away out of love? Beth told me about Sir Giles Langwood and told me she was trying to contact him. He seemed to care about what happened to her. How very considerate of Sir Giles. Especially considering the fact that he departed in such a cavalier manner. I beg your pardon? Sir Giles was Beth's favorite beau. He came to see her constantly. I thought he was particularly generous and wealthy. Apparently. He was just irresponsible. When I presented him with the bill and requested that he pay up, he paled and asked for more time. From that day on, no news of him. Poor Beth was completely forgotten. Now that that little thief is no longer under my roof, he's worried about her again. That is rather charitable of him. And I must say, quite convenient. She claims to be carrying his child. Is that so? Well, she will be sadly disillusioned. A man who spills a seed in a whorehouse does not like to be confronted with the fruit. Is the child really Giles's? Yeah. There are so many potential fathers. How is she planning to convince a noble to take responsibility for it? Beth is too astute a girl to have been taken in like this. I'm surprised. I don't know what to say. Would you like to look at her room? Perhaps she left something that could shed some light on the matter. That's a good idea. I will return in a moment, dear lady. Why not? Yeah, of course. Uh, would be... Illogical for her to have many potential fathers. You are in search the room for clues as to why she fled. Right law, show me what I need to know. Cloth hatch with a mid strong scent of herbs. Moon teas to abort, I think. To abort uh, childs, I think. Maybe she was trying to get pregnant of him on purpose. My sweet Beth, I must live on a journey and deprive you of future visits. Although my heart is heavy at the thought, restore every chance I shall not return. Indeed, I'm living to keep a promise. You must understand that from now on I can no longer enjoy the pressures of a brothel. Bad as my... as was my want with you. Okay. Guessing it's the, the past of want or something. So I bid you farewell. I have no doubt that you will soon become little princess of another great man, Giles. Okay, let's go and show Shataya Mundi. I remember someone in the Ux using it for birth control or something. So, my friend. Did the room satisfy your curiosity? Bethany apparently kept a stash of unmarked medicinal herbs. Perhaps you could tell me a bit more about them. This is moon tea. It's brewed in hot water with a drop of honey to take away the bitter taste. Some of my girls take it to avoid an unwelcome pregnancy. And does it work? Certainly. Here in King's Landing, the mixture is prepared by the maesters of the Citadel. It is expensive, but powerful. Those girls who can afford it never give birth against their will. Never. Yeah, this is what I think. That's the proof 
or her proof that she is pregnant of him. Maybe it wasn't against her will. By stopping the medicine, she had a way to keep Sir Giles in her power. The benefits of moon tea linger in the body like a hot bath, my dear. You take one, you're clean. And you don't get dirty again as soon as you get out of the water. It can sometimes take up to several weeks after the last dose to be able to conceive again. And even in the event that Beth had planned all this ahead of time. Must I remind you of where she lived? If the child does indeed exist, which I doubt, it will be impossible to prove that Sir Giles is the father. So, she was having a laugh at my expense. She cooked up some pretty story to reach Sir Giles, and she's not afraid of being found out. This does not bode well. Before you take your leave, Alistair, may I ask a favor of you? It would be ungrateful of me to not at least listen to you, dear lady. Beth's scheming has cost my house dearly. Sir Giles may very well deny it, but he owes us a considerable debt if you manage to see him. Could you let him know that he must pay his debts? What's more, if you could do your best to bring the ungrateful wretch back into the fold. Are you sure you want that? From what you say, it would seem your house is better off without her. We are the best house of pleasure in all of the Seven Kingdoms, my dear. We don't just throw any old piece of meat at our patrons. Welcoming a new girl, training her, dressing her, it costs a fortune. Beth is a gifted asset. And I invested a lot in her. I beg you to bring her back to me. I'm sure there are some people out there who would no doubt have something to say on the matter, my dear. But if I may be of any assistance to you, please be assured I will gladly do so, if only for old time's sake. For old time's sake, then. My thanks, Alistair. Yeah, love shark. They most likely. The king, Robert is the king, and he likes to have sex a lot with peasant girls, with lowborn city girls, with whores, with everyone that does not have a penis, as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> so that, that could possibly be the case. That they are indeed not able to choose the king, but rather the king goes there and chooses the girls. That's what I would think can happen. Sir Alistair, at last, did the lovely Shatire tell you anything more? Yes, of sorts. Of note, you forgot to mention the coin you owe her. That sheds a new light on matters, don't you think? That again? Gods be good, will I ever rid myself of this? True, I may not have settled my debts with Shatire straight away. I sometimes went there without seeing any of the girls. I paid no heed. I lost count. She took advantage of the situation. One day, all was fine. The next, she was demanding an absolute fortune from me. What should I have done? Pay her, perhaps? That is what a knight would do. I can see that you've never been in my position. I cannot afford to part with such an amount. May I remind you that I am soon to be married? My family's coffers are going to be emptied enough as it is. I will pay, of course. But only when I can. That said, for the time being, it has nothing to do with the situation with Beth. My differences with the old brothel are less of a concern than this unborn bastard. Yeah, let's go and talk to her to see if she caves in. If she caves in, then... I'm sure Shatai would not come and demand payment from you outside of her establishment. You are free to do as your honor demands. Let's go. I hate to think of the poor girl in the gutter because of me. Okay. That was not what I envisioned. The 
apparently that's what's going to happen. Oh, I'm getting my boots filthy round here. Let's hurry up and get out of here, Beth. Yeah, I don't see how this is going to turn out well. We're going to get mocked by those three guys. There you are. I never thought to see you in a hole like this. Do not worry, my darling. We will find something for you. But the answer is obvious, my good knight. With all the coin you owe me, I've enough to buy a small man's and dress in murish silk until the day I die. What? I feel as though I'm talking to that coin hoarder Shatire. Come now. That's not why I'm here. I've come for you. If you want to fuck whores, you have to open your purse, my lord. Otherwise, you best aim lower and force yourself upon a servant wench. You haven't paid Shatire, but you will pay me. Okay, I, I'm not up for this bullshit. Uh, well, they... Why, why? Why what? Uh, Love Shack, it was per pretty common to have bastards because... The lords ha like to have a good time. Just like many people do now, but birth control was not as easy to come by. As you heard, uh, that moon tea was, is very expensive. Not everyone could get their hands on it. And the lords just like to fuck. No, no, they are not trying to have her killed by for being pregnant, no. Not really. The whole problem is that this guy didn't pay anyone for all the times he he had sex with Bethany. Neither the establishment not her. So she's trying to get her money back and that guy is trying to avoid paying it. That's all the problem. On the other hand, the main story is it's about what you say, the king is having bastards everywhere and the queen is trying to kill them all. That's the <laughs> and in that case it is a problem because the bastards of the king have the blood of the king so they could even uh, uh, be in a confusing su succession arrangement they could be a problem because they are the sons of the king. Yeah. In this particular instance, um, there there is no no such problem. I don't like being taken for a fool, girl. This business seems anything but honest to me. Sir Giles will not pay a groat if I have anything to do with it. That's what I feared. You grand lords always stay together and keep the small folk down. It's a good thing we know how to do likewise. Gun, sir. Our guests want to plead poverty. That's not honest, my lords. Not honest at all. Come on, lads. Let's show the good lords the price of not paying their debts. Okay. There you go. I think I'm alone here. Get more of them. That's unexpected.
Holy shit, Mar! Are you fucking kidding me? Defend me! What a massacre! Shatia is expecting you, girl. She is willing to forgive you and to take you back into her house. You should get down on your knees and thank her. If it were me, I would have gladly handed you over to the gold cloaks. Yes, my lord. We are done here, Sir Giles. I doubt she will trouble you again. I don't know how to thank you enough for all you have done, Sir Alistair. Please. At least take this gold. Yes! Thank you, sir. Go back to your family. May the Lord bathe your wedding in his protective light. I hope so. Farewell. This gold, that's no gold. Go back to Shatayas, alright. Yeah, I was going for a, a, a mage ranger, but... Uh, I should have gone for a mage swordsman, a battle mage, warble, could this be it, yes, 40 damage, okay, nice. Okay, finally I got a good boy. Yeah, yeah, the voiceover is not great. Uh, but it's not awful either. And the story is quite good. There, they, ke they kept the themes from the books pretty much intact. Very good stuff, indeed. But I don't really need good voice acting, I just need voice acting in my games. Because I have heard one too many uh, audiobooks that are pretty car crappy, but I don't really care about the quality. I just need someone to tell me things instead of I read them aloud that's all I want you know Livian <laughs> yeah it's pretty much like the Witcher 1 I agree with you if this was released a couple of years ago it would have been a quite a success instead of the mixed reception it had Oh, Alistair. Beth has come back. She told me what you did. Did she cause you too much trouble? At one point, I feared she would give you the slip again. Where could she possibly go? No, put your mind at rest. The prodigal daughter has fallen into line. She hardly dared look me in the face. She has retired to her quarters. No doubt attempting to rid herself of the smell of manure. You may go see her if you wish. And thank you, Alistair. Really, it is a gift of the gods to have you once again in King's Landing. Yeah, it is a very good game. Certainly worth the money. Uh, you can roleplay. You, you have a lot of classes. Six classes overall. And two different main characters. 
But you can role play as you wish. And it's mainly main story. When you look at the quest log, let me show you. Most of er, the chapters only have one or two objectives. So it's it's ver a very focused game. You don't have hundreds of side quests and you're running around doing bullshit. No. It's all tied into your main quest. Which is a I don't know, change for the good. If you ask me. Well, look at her. She looks very different, doesn't she? My Lord Alistair, have you come to check that I'm keeping well? Or perhaps Shatai promised you a payment in kind for bringing me back? That's enough, Beth. I've come to see if all is well with you. I can't complain. The house and clients smell good and the food is better. The girls were happy to see me again. How about you? I am too, I suppose. No one here makes me feel ashamed of being a whore. You will not be one forever. The Lord gives the gift of his light to us all. One day you'll know how to find it. Perhaps. For a long time now I've prayed to the Maiden to free me from this life. But after what I did, I doubt she wants anything more to do with me. A shame. I am what I am. Here you are. Take this trinket. I shan't need it anymore. A carved figure of the Maiden? I have no use for such unholy idols, Bethany. Take it, I beg you. I've nothing else to offer. Everything else belongs to Shataya. I just want to thank you for looking after me, even when I didn't deserve it. Very well, I will take it. Take care of yourself, young woman. I should be all right. Thank you for coming, my lord. All right. Let's go and talk and finish the fucking main quest, which I've been putting up for quite a while. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, wait until there is a sale. It is... It, it was released in, in May, or I think. I got it later from Amazon. They will drop the price. I can assure you that, because the, they haven't sold that many. It will happen. Most likely when... Christmas or when the next season of the of the series uh, gets underway, I think. Those are my guesses. All right, let's talk to. Our benefactor and how far am I from letting up? 200 experience. Well, this should do it, I think. Alistair, were you able to discover anything? I know what happened. The murderers in the sewers were targeting a boy by the name of Cedric Rivers. His last name leaves no room for doubt. He's a bastard child, just like those the Queen is hunting down. But the assassins also killed whoever else was in the hideout at that time. And that's how Garwin fell victim to them. How can something this dreadful have been allowed to happen? He really is dead. His body was moved to the city watchtower. I saw it with my own eyes. By the father. That poor boy. Sir Desmond told me of the bandits you encountered. Was it they who killed Garwin? The Reapers did the dirty work. There's no denying that. But they were just pawns. They are now paying for their crimes. What do you mean? I coerced some of their members to tell me what happened. And that information led me to the city watchtower. That's where I found Garwin's corpse. But that's not all. The leader of the Reapers, the murderer himself, was locked up there. He confessed everything. The commander of the City Watch paid him to carry out the task. Then he left him to rot in the dungeons, so that the crime would never be traced back to him. And here is the proof. Look at this letter. It was Valar himself 
who gave the assassination order to the commander of the city watch. He's behind everything. Are you saying your half-brother murdered Garwin? I do not understand. Why would he do such a thing? No, he's killing all the male, male hairs to our lands. That's what he's doing. Obviously. No male Sarwix. When he marries the only woman, there is no one to yeah, put his succession in question. Look at what's written here. See that you do not leave any witness. He must have known that Garwin would be with Cedric. Valar was trying to capture my brother after all. This was an ideal opportunity for him. He didn't leave him any chance of clearing his name. You believe he acted out of revenge? Obviously. He wants to wipe out the Sarwicks and take control of Riverspring. Yeah. Valar used this opportunity to get rid of him. One less obstacle in the way of his conquest. He is now assured that he will become head of House Sarwick, being both my sister's husband and my father's only descendant. What are you planning to do? Garwin was my brother. I can't just let that bastard Valar destroy my family. He will pay with his blood. I'll never let that wretch take the ancestral lands of House Sarwick. I already have this letter which proves his involvement in the sewer murders. I have to find out what it is that links these murders and expose Valar's treachery. Once the people learn of his treachery, the Queen will have no choice but to sever her ties with him. You are right. The answer probably lies with the bastards that the Queen is hunting down. I'm not sure I follow. Well, if you think about it, isn't that what all these murders have in common? All the victims were bastards. In fact, you helped track one of them down yourself, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, this guy doesn't know, but our other character does know that the queen is hunting down the royal bastards. The illegitimate sons of King Robert. But we do not know, Alistair doesn't know that. This bastard child was related to an enemy of the queen. Both are dead, on her orders. Indeed. But I think that the hounding of the bastards hides more than a simple plot. After all, why did she have to call on you? If these targets really were enemies of the crown, why didn't she send the gold cloaks? Indeed. She chose an inconspicuous method every time. The Queen does not wish for this matter to be made public. These bastards are not chosen at random. Valar himself is one, but he's not worried. So there must be some other link between them, but what? I can't put my finger on it. I might have a lead on this matter. One of my contacts at court passed a letter on to me. It's from Lord John Aaron himself, the King's Hand. He sent it to the Red Keep some time before his death. It was meant for Grand Meister Pycelle, who sits on the Royal Council. You claim he wrote a letter just two weeks before his death. But what did it say? Well, John Aaron asked the Grand Meister to consult a book on the lineages of the Seven Kingdoms. And this came after he was seen in the company of Stannis Baratheon, visiting various dens of ill repute. It caused quite a stir. If you're unfamiliar with these two men, they have long established reputations of unfailing virtue. Normally, neither of them would ever frequent that kind of establishment. After a little investigating, I learned that the Hand had visited half a dozen bastards that day, one of whom was the Potter that you and Sir Valar killed. In light of all these pieces of information, I've some doubts that John Aaron's death was by natural causes. You think that because he was walking about town and consulting some tome on lineage that someone had the Hand of the King assassinated? Think about it. If John Aaron discovered something about those bastards that someone powerful didn't want him to know, I have a feeling that this book on lineages holds the key to this mystery. And I've sent word to a man capable of shedding light on all of that for us. He's a Meister of the Citadel called Rupert. He's also an expert in ancient texts. 
And it just so happens that he has worked on the book. I do not know him personally, but he has agreed to meet with us. He was asked to bring a copy of the tomb. Why call on this, Maester Rupert? Grand Meister Pycelle is the Queen's loyal servant. It would be highly inadvisable to contact him directly. However, there is still one concern to settle. The uh, payment. How much is he asking for? That's the problem. He does not seek money. If he did, this matter would already be settled. He wants a particular settlement, but he refuses to explain himself in writing. He would rather discuss this in private. Fine. I will meet with him. Where can I find him? The meeting has been arranged near an illegal arena, hidden in the sewers. I sincerely hope he will give us the help we need. I've already taken the liberty of sending Sir Desmond there, as he knows these parts well. He will be able to come to your aid if something goes wrong. Thank you, Lord Halton. And there you know! They are tying it up with the books and everything. But that's it for today and I still haven't ended up. I cannot fucking believe it. <laughs> but I'm so much shit to him and 200 points away from leveling up, but I cannot play more. So thank you very much for watching. I hope I'll see you next time when we continue to unravel the mystery of the bastards. Until then. Long live the Empire! And Martin! What a wondrous world he has been!